How much uh, do wind and grain affect putts? Wind can have a massive effect on the putt. Depending on how hard it's blowing and the direction, it can have a massive effect. Uh, the second tournament I ever did was at the Bob Hope, uh, formerly known as the Bob Hope Tournament out, in, out of the desert. And the first or second day of the tournament, the wind was blowing about 35 miles an hour. And we had a putt on, it was a par three. I don't remember, it was like hole 16 maybe or something on one of these green, one of these uh, courses. And the ball was breaking the wrong direction for the whole morning. So the ball was supposed to break right to left. It was breaking left to right the whole morning because the wind was blowing 35 miles an hour uphill. Huh. And then the wind died in the afternoon and slowly the, the putt reverted to breaking the correct direction. And we tracked it the whole time, but we had to track that wind speed changing. And we also have wind direction because the direction and the speed both both matter. But yeah. by, by the time the putts, you know, by the time you're at 10 miles an hour of wind, it's it's changing the putt 100 percent. And if you don't factor that in, you're missing the putt now. So what are you doing? Like pumping all this? Like I got your laptop out and you're like pumping. Yeah, it's exactly what I do. I actually sat there. To, uh... I would actually sit there and estimate the green speed, which is actually easy. Um, and then wind speed and direction. I had a, uh, a wind meter on the tower on the green that was giving me speed and direction real time that came back oh. with a wireless connection. And so I was monitoring the actual wind speed and, and angle it was hitting um, during the whole tournament while we were on the broadcast. Wow. And, and now, without that, 10 miles an hour without that, you're, 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 the line's wrong. Wow. Now, where are you located right now? Uh, Orlando. Okay. So Bermuda, right? So we're yep. talking about grainy, grainy greens. Yep. Uh, I'm a Yankee up here in Philadelphia. And so, I, you know, they say we can't put on... Bermuda and vice versa, et cetera, because of the grain. Um, and I find that uh, Bermuda is a little funny for me. So what have you found if, in looking closely at grain? What's the impact there? Yeah, it's, it's usually not the impact people think it is. Um, okay. The primary difference in Bermuda is the uphill downhill effective stimp is very, very different. So for instance, in Kapalua, there was almost three feet of difference between an uphill putt and a downhill putt, um, the effective stimp. So the uphill would feel like a nine and the downhill would feel like a 12. And so that, okay. that throws people off. So that's the primary difference. The other difference, which is what really gets people is when you get cross grain, meaning the grain is going a different direction than the break. And that mm -hmm. has a straightening effect. So it can either straighten the putt. It can even make the putt break the wrong way. So you could have a putt that's slightly right to left that ends up breaking slightly left to right. So you'll feel it and you'll see it going left and it'll go right. And that can yeah. happen with grain in the right situation. Um, and so that's got to be accounted for, or you can have a straight putt that breaks from outside the hole because of grain. And so that really only happens on Bermuda grasses. And, you know, there's different levels of how strong the grain is. So some grains are heavier than other grains. So they have a bigger effect than, than faster, small, um, faster greens with different grass types. And so that all has to be kind of, you can figure that out pretty easily actually with a couple tests, but on Bermuda grass, you definitely have to understand grain, especially on your flatter areas. You know, when you get to your flatter areas where pins tend to be, um, you know, I do the read first and then my secondary check is grain. And so grain is almost an adjustment like wind. So what should the putt do? Okay, now the grain is going a little opposite. I had a putt today, actually, same thing with a student. Putt should have broken like a one left to right, but I had cross grain and we played a half and it was perfect. But without, without making that grain adjustment, it wasn't going in. It was a huh. miss. Now... How do you decide? Because, you know, there are different like, hey, go look at the hole and that'll tell you which see which way the on the brown side is the the way the grass is. It's growing the opposite direction. I mean, there are different sort of tricks people tell you. Yeah. For how to yeah, read the grain. Do you have a, whole, do you have a way to get it? Uh, yeah, the hole helps. Um, definitely the brown side is the direction at the hole, which is not always the direction during the putt. Um, my other my other main trick I use is look at old cups. So you look at the old cups in the area and, and you find the brown on the old cups. Okay. And if you see a bunch of old cups of the grain all going left, the grain's going left, even though it slopes going right. And so, you know, with new cups, you're not going to see the, the, the burnt edge. So if you go out first thing in the morning in a tournament with new cups, you're not going to see it on the cup. So you got to look at the old cups. That's a, damn, I learned. So that is, that's pretty smart. Yeah. The old, the old cups cup. are a dead giveaway. The brown side, because the grass is growing over the edge, the brown side means the grain is moving towards the brown spot. Yeah, and it's the brown yeah. side of the outer ring of the cup, not the inner right. ring, because a lot of times I'll put the plug in backwards. So you'll have an inner brown edge and you'll have an outer brown edge. The grain goes towards the outer brown edge. Yeah. Not the plug itself, but the outside of the plug. Yeah, the plug itself. Yeah, it's not going to tell you nothing. Okay. Right. Wow, love it. Now, what are some other 
as you're studying putting, as you're studying how to read greens, as you're trying to come up with a system for which there's never been a system before, what other surprises are you learning? Things you didn't expect to find out about all the things that can affect our putts. Huh, um, the first surprise was that we can predict it better than you think, hmm. right? People were like, ah, oh, you can maybe get close. But the reality is, is without many adjustments, you can get within a couple inches on most, most putts. Um, the second surprise is pitch marks, footprints, all that have a much, much smaller effect than people claim. Huh. Um, still the third replace surprise... Your- Fix your pitch mark still, people. We don't want to give anyone. Yeah, well, answer. people, you know, people always say, well, there's footprints all over. You can't account for that. It's going <laughs> to screw up your read. And I, I can think of maybe twice in six years where I saw a footprint actually deflect a golf ball that was on our, our virtual lane point line on TV where it actually hit a footprint and kind of deflected offline. And huh. we did thousands and thousands of putts. And I can literally, I can think of tw- two times it happened. One time was Poulter. I'll never forget it. It literally hit it and kind of went in and, and turned. And the other one was one tiger hit and it hit the footprint, um, went a little bit left, came out of the footprint, came back right and got back online again. But it clearly kind of got tiger offline wood. during a footprint. Yeah. Tiger footprints can't even, can't stop tiger. Um, other surprises. Um, wind is a bigger effect than most people realize. Okay. Uh, you know, 20 miles an hour wind, you're getting balls, majority of balls break uphill. Um, especially on faster greens. If you get 20 miles an hour at the flag, uh, it basically takes all the break out of a putt. What do you mean? Or makes it go the wrong direction. How the do you mean it takes the flag is pretty stiff. All right, so it's blown 20, and I've got a right to left. I think it's going right to left, you know, a cup. Um, I'm, And I, what do you mean it takes the break out of the... It, if I, I, it will not break right to left. <laughs> if it's broke, if it's break, if the wind is going up, the up slope. Going up slope. If, okay. If so I think if wind is going up slope That's or down slope. That's interesting because yeah, so, I think of it going, it's either going across. I, I wouldn't pay attention to it if it wasn't usually think about it as much if it wasn't sort of saying moving right, moving across my line. But you're yeah, talking I mean, about it can, the angle of the wind changes the effect, obviously. But if it's blowing straight up slope, it'll take all the break out of that putt. If it's blowing down, blowing down slope, it'll double or triple the amount of break you get. Wow. Well, so you're, well, you're mean, one yeah, cup out if it's blowing 20 from the right. I uh, could easily break a foot easily, easily. So all these variables, all these things to be considering. Um, but I just want to step up and hit my putt. So thankfully you've put a system together. Uh, if that takes into account all these factors. So in its essence, at its fundamental level, you know, what is aim point? Uh, aim point is very, very simple at a fundamental level. You're just trying to find how much side slope the ball's rolling across. Okay. And so same way the computer works, but the computer breaks it down into one inch squares. We're going to break it into a bigger pieces than that, obviously, because we can't do one inch squares, but you, you, you're, you're getting the number. Every putt breaks like a number. It's like a yardage. Every, every shot plays a certain yardage. Well, every putt breaks like a number, usually one, two or three, frankly. Um, And so you're trying to figure out that number. And then what happens when you hold your fingers up is it, it, you're creating a launch angle off your eyes. And it just so happens that when you hold up one finger on a 1% slope, it creates the same launch angle that matches the physics of a golf ball breaking across a golf green. Now, obviously, there's different green speeds. So, but like on a stimp of eight, if you hold your arm straight out, that's about a two degree launch angle for one finger. And that's exactly how much a ball breaks on stimp eight on a 1% slope. On a faster green, uh, say stimp 12, it breaks, um, it breaks about four degrees for, for a 1%. So what do you do? You bring your hand halfway to your face. So instead of having a straight arm, you have a bent arm. So all your green speed adjustment is done with arm bend. So you'll see guys with different arm bends on different courses or different weeks. Um, but every putt breaks like a number. Is it a fast two or is it a slow two? It doesn't matter. It's a a two is a two. Is it a two to stimp nine or a stimp 12? Well, you just adjust for that with arm bend and it adjusts the launch angle to be correct. So it's a very natural read because you're feeling slope, which is way more accurate than looking for slope. People, any everybody I've ever worked with can feel slope down to a half a percent, no problem. Um, really? See, oh that's yeah, the, easy. Me, where I'm like, I couldn't do that. I just stand there and be, tell you what the slope is. That's absurd. Everybody, usually within 15 minutes of training, <laughs> everybody I've taught has, has starts picking up half percents, and I'm talking kids, um, adults, amateurs, club players, tour players. Doesn't matter. Like everybody is very well equipped to feel tilt. Otherwise, we'd fall down constantly every time we walked anywhere, and we don't. 
So our body adjusts to it. So the key is we're just we're just associating a certain tilt feeling of tilt with a number. Okay. Right. So when I feel this feeling, it's a one. When I feel this feeling, it's a two. Um, that's very easy to train. And then the fingers convert that into a mathematically correct place to aim. And so the the, the feel part of it is what the speed is. Uphill, downhill, faster greens, slower greens. You know, you've got to adjust your arm bend on that. But it's you're usually only adjusting by an inch or two of arm bend. It's not a huge adjustment. 